All right, hey, Hades Mega here, and I'm shooting a video on how to remove the rear wheel on your Honda Super Cub C125, okay? I've never done it before. I've gotten pretty close to it, but not, not didn't quite get to the point where I take it off. So I'm shooting a video about that because I've got to replace the rear tire on my bike, okay? So if you want to figure out, uh, if you want to see what tire I'm going to be using and how I replace my rear tire, um, I will have a separate video about that. I'll put that at the end of the video, okay? But the purpose of this part of the video is to remove the wheel and to put it back, all right? So when I'm done putting the tire, the new tire back on, um, I will show you how to put it back on, all right? It's pretty much the opposite, okay? Um, from what I've seen in the manual, it's kind of complicated, <laughs> okay? Um, it's not like every other motorcycle with like a disc brake, all right? So I don't like drum brakes, all right? Hayes Meg is not a big fan of drum brakes. However, the, the rear brake on the Super Cub does work pretty good. I, I do kind of like it, but um, I would rather have a disc brake. I feel disc brakes are, they're easier to maintain is what I say, and, and they're easier to take apart and everything. So they're less complicated. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, we're, and we're gonna use this guy. Super Cub C125 service manual, okay, to, to do it. We're going to do it by the book. All right, and then uh, I've got a bunch of tools here that I think we're going to need. All right, I'll, I'll go over them briefly, and then uh, at the end of the video, I'll go over all the tools that I really use, all right? Um, but um, one thing you're going to need is a torque wrench, and I don't have that out yet right now. I've got a, a breaker bar and a 14 millimeter socket, all right? Or you can use, uh, you can use a wrench if you want. Um, you're going to need a... Um, needle nose pliers to take some a cotter pin out um, you're gonna need an allen wrench to take uh, the the chain cover off all right uh, and you're gonna need a bunch of wrenches all right you're gonna need a 19 millimeter a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter and uh, it would it's oh I don't have it with me but um, it it would be a good idea to have a marker so you can mark where all the nuts are so you can put them back where you found them, or else you're going to wind up having to like adjust everything to spec again. All right, if you don't remember, uh, my suggestion is um, for the for the chain adjustment. Okay, um, just take a picture, take a picture of your axle, and then and then try to get it back to say it to the same position it was before, or you can mark it before you would mark it with like a you can mark it with a like a black marker i think that would be okay and you could if you don't want the mark to be there you can rub it off with some alcohol all right rubbing alcohol um yeah so let's uh let's hop to it because i gotta change this tire because my, my super cup's got to continue making money right all right so i'm gonna go put these aside and uh let's go do it okay so we're gonna be working from the back of the bike all right i'm gonna just kind of tell you what to do and then i'm gonna go do it um so this is uh this is my was it 20 2021 honda super cub c125 i've got it on the center stand right now so that's how you're going to want it just put it on the center stand and then your rear wheel will be elevated enough where you can take it off um if if you're going to have it i know if you're going to have your bike like around and you might hit it or something it may fall back it would be a good idea to put a jack stand underneath the swing arm so that doesn't happen okay i'm just going to tell you that now <laughs> Because my, my garage is kind of cluttered right now. All right, but there's the tire. It's all, I did a good, nice smoky burnout. Check that video out. If you want to see a, a Honda Super Cub do a burnout. Can you do it? Yes, yes you can. All right. It's not it's not the most proficient machine at doing burnouts, but you can do it. <laughs> Whether it's bad for the clutch or not, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> okay, but anyway, um, let's go take a look at the manual real quick. All right, but yeah, have, make sure your bike is on its center stand obviously that's really the only way you can um, store your bike is on the center stand because uh, these honda super cubs at least in the united states do not come with a side stand like my bike okay um, and you couldn't do it on the side stand anyways uh, that or you could use some kind of stand like a like a, a motorcycle lift like this or um or you could use you might be able to use a rear stand all right if you have a rear motorcycle stand kind of like that but but like one with the um, with the little claws that grab onto the swing arm, then you could probably use that, all right? But um, I would say just put it on the center stand. That's why it's got one, <laughs> okay? But uh, what a pain in the booty it is to to have to fix a flat on this guy. That's what I want to say. 
Um, hmm, that's a good question. I wonder if the, the, the tools that come with the Super Cub, you can take the wheel off. I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to use my garage tools. Okay, okay here on page 16-5 of the Honda Super Cub C125 service manual, you've got a wonderful diagram of how everything goes together. Where We will be using this later when we start to torque everything, right? It's got all your torque specs right here, all right? Um, and it has rear wheel removal, okay? So there you go. The first step is support the vehicle with its center stand. Boom, there it is, it's already there. It should be, it should be like that, right? <laughs> remove the chain case, all right? Okay, the first step is remove okay. the chain case. There is your chain case. It is a five millimeter Allen wrench. I will be using this T-handle dealy here. There's, uh, there's four bolts, okay? Um, typically when I do my chain maintenance, I just take the bottom one out, but it says to take them out, so we're going to take them out. This will be probably a good time to do some chain maintenance. Okay, and they just got these itty bitty little screws. Don't lose them. Okay, support it so it doesn't fall down. Okay, uh, mine, I think the, the cover is kind of hard to take off because I got this aftermarket shock on there. But I can kind of wriggle it out. Okay, so that's what should have come out so far. All right, the top, 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 and the bottom case, and the uh, the four screws. Okay, that so hold the next it. step in the manual it says is to remove the brake adjusting nut, spring, and joint pin. And you're wondering why I have a permanent marker in my hand because this is a good time to use it. All right, so there's your adjusting nut. Yours will not be red like mine. All right, unless you have the Kitako brake brake adjusting nut. Ooh, okay, it's a it's a black. It's a black one. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so Honda decided to use a black threaded rod for this, so I'm gonna use a silver marker, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just mark where the brake was, all right? The brake nut was. Okay, so, so that's how it was. Uh, so when we put it back, we'll put it back somewhere around that position, okay? Okay, so to remove this nut is quite easy, right? You don't even need tools to do it. It's a thumb screw. So what you got to do is pull the uh, the drum brake in, all right, and that should loosen the nut, all right. It should unlock it, all right, and you just unscrew it. I should have taken a picture of it first, so I could find out what position it's in. But it may need to be adjusted again anyway, so. All right, and then just loosen that all the way. Okay, I figured it out. So what you gotta do is you gotta press down on the brake pedal and it should pull this rod back, all right? They didn't tell you to do that in the manual, but that's how I figured it out. <laughs> so hold this, pull this out, and then it'll pop out, all right? And then you could take the pin out. All right, pin comes out, spring comes out. Now you're in business, all right? So you should have the adjusting nut left, all right, the pin, and then the spring, all right? Okay. Okay, next section. Remove the following. The cotter pin, nut, washer, and rubber washer. Remove the bolt and release the stopper arm from the brake pedal. Okay, so first thing to do is to remove the cotter pin. Because it's not going to go anywhere without the cotter pin. And you're probably going to have to replace the cotter pin. I'll tell you now. 
maybe he might be able to use it again I'm not sure if you break it you're gonna have to replace it okay so if you're having trouble getting this pin out what you could do is use a uh, pick all right I want to use a pick stick it in the cotter pin and then I want to hit it out Like this. Oh, it's not wanting to come out. Being stubborn. Okay. There's the cotter pin. You might need to replace it, okay? Now, you gotta remove the nut. The nut is a 12 millimeter. Okay. I'd imagine you probably don't have to torque it because it's got a cotter pin. All right, there's the washer and the rubber washer it's talking about, okay? So on top of the, you've got the washer and the rubber washer. All right, the rubber washer goes towards the back. And I think you gotta take this nut out, this bolt out, okay? Okay, and it mentions to release the stopper arm from the brake panel, all right? So I think that's what this is. Just. lower it or something I think that's all um, that just keeps the, the drum from spinning that's all its job is okay. okay so here's what you should have after you take that stuff out the bolt well let's go in the order that you took it out the cotter pin the nut a washer and a rubber washer okay and then the bolt okay put that aside now try to make sure Try to keep everything neat. This is a lot of parts to take out, <laughs> take out guys, for just to take a freaking wheel off, man. All right. Um, and then, yeah, make sure that little arm isn't connected to the, the hub anymore. Okay, so the next step is to loosen the axle nut, loosen the bolt, drivetrain, adjuster, lock nuts, and adjusters. Push the rear wheel forward to release the drive chain. All right, and then remove the following the axle nut, rear axle, adjuster plates, rear wheel, and right side collar. Okay, so now this is another time where you're going to want to uh, um, have your marker ready, okay? Okay, get your black marker. And I guess, I don't know, I guess these are lined up already, but I will mark the bolt right there. All right. Have to adjust your threads. Mark this right here. Okay. Um, also, what you could do is take a picture of where it's at, all right? So now, I, uh, if I look at this, it's one, two, three, four, five, six ticks before this, the edge of this lines up with one of the marks, okay? So it's six marks from the back of the bike. So, so that's how I'll know, you know, that's how I'll fine-tune it, all right? That's what I'm saying, all right? Before I lock it in. Okay, so Hayes okay. Mega is not the biggest uh, fan of the design of this bike, all right? I'm not going to lie, all right? The good thing is it doesn't need a lot of maintenance. All right, so for this side, you're going to need a 19 millimeter, all right? I'm going to use this 19 millimeter open-ended dealie here, all right? Um, just to break it loose, I think, all right? And if you need to get it out, you can probably pull tug on the muffler a little bit, all right? And then I'm going to use this breaker bar with a 14 millimeter socket on the other side. All right, right over here. Okay. But I think you're going to want to loosen it with the nut. Okay. There's no way you're going to get a breaker bar in there unless you take the muffler off though. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. Okay, here's what's going on the other side. It's pretty loose already. Oh, whoa, whoa. okay. See, yeah, see. So that's why I said you want to use a jack stand. <laughs> so the bike doesn't fall back. Oh, yeah, it fell back again. See. Okay, 
that came off. Okay, so we're getting close to taking the wheel off. I highly suggest that you uh, you have put a jack stand underneath the swing arm so the bike doesn't rock back, okay? While it's on the center stand because while I was trying to take the axle off, the bike rocked back. Right, so you want to be careful or else it'll just, with the wheel, if the wheel isn't on there and it rocks back like that, it's just going to fall back, all right? So you don't want that. So make sure you put something, put a box, anything to keep it from falling back like that, all right? That's what I did. I put a jack stand underneath there. What I did is I, I pulled it up, I, I picked the bike up a little bit, and then I, I picked the, um, I moved the, the jack stand up to the next notch, and then I lowered it on there. Okay. But yeah, it should, it's not going anywhere now. Maybe next thing you want to do is uh, loosen the adjusters so you could move the chain forward. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna need to put the 12 millimeter in the back. the 12 millimeter in the back, put the 10 in the front, and squeeze them. Okay. Yep. Trying to remove one of them and it's trying to move both of them. So just, I would just loosen it. Just make sure like, yeah, you took a picture of where it was before. You don't have to take it off, but just, just loosen it all the way. So we could slide the chain off. All right, I want to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, and then you're, what you're going to want to do is push the wheel all the way forward. Okay, and hopefully that'll take the chain off. Okay, so you saw I pushed the rear wheel, uh, yeah, pushed the rear wheel forward. Okay, so push it forward all the way. I push the, just push the nut all the way. Okay, hopefully that'll be enough to get it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this adjuster off because it'll probably fall off. There's also a washer in there, so don't forget about that. What I'm going to do is pull the axle out a little bit. So I can take this off. Okay. Okay, I got the adjuster plate out. out. Um, so mine has a white mark up here. Somebody must have taken this axle out at some point. Uh, it's facing upwards, okay? So, yeah. Yeah, what I might want to do is just get... So what you there. might want to do, so you remember to put this back. I don't know if it's, you know, it has to be back in a certain position. What I'm going to do is go like this. All right, right up like that. And I'm going to write R because it just came off of the right side of the bike, okay? So now I know when I look at the back, this is on the right side and this side should be facing up, okay? Also, I got that white mark there, so, okay? And then uh, I'll do the same for the other side. Okay, so we're going to remove the wheel now. Um, we're at that point where we can remove the wheel. Uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the chain off of there. Um, so you loosen the, you did loosen the chain, right? <laughs> You did loosen the adjuster all the way, so with that, with that uh, loosened all the way, you should be able to get the chain off, just like that. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, yeah, I think you should wear gloves. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna let it rest here. At the end of the uh, okay, my chain is really greasy, so uh, you probably yours is probably really greasy too. I have to say, uh, this is one of the lowest maintenance chain chain jobs I've seen on a bike because uh, I haven't really adjusted this chain at all since I've owned the bike. <laughs> okay, um, so so now we can remove the wheel since we've got the chain out of the way like that. All you got to do is pull the axle out, and it should just come out. <clears throat> Goes well.
There we go. This comes out with a gusto. <laughs> Okay, there is a there is a spacer on the other side. Make sure you don't lose that. All right, there is a spacer in here too. But remember, the longer one is on the right side. I'm pretty sure you can't mess it up. And now I've run into another problem. This fender is in the way. <laughs> Somehow maneuver the wheel out of the bike. I don't know how that oh, what a pain in the booty this is, guys. <laughs> okay. So here's the brake assembly. All right, it should just spin right there. You should just remove it like that, okay? There's your drum brake, marvel at it. Piece of old technology that we don't really use that much on bikes anymore. Um, okay, how do we take this out? Uh, I just roll the roll the wheel forward and then try to try to get it out from from, from the underneath the fender. Okay, Ace Mega doesn't really know how to get this wheel out, but the next step was to take the cush drive hub out. So that's what I want to do. All right, cush drive hub comes out. And there's a there's a spacer that comes out from under there too. <laughs> I hope you remember which way it goes, man. Okay, yeah. Okay, maybe now I can take it off since the hub isn't in there anymore. Oh. There we go, we got it. Move this adjuster out. Oh, wait. Maybe I can get it out now. Oh, this reflector is in the way though. Maybe flatten the tire as much as you can. It's the hardest wheel to ever remove from the bike. You gotta take the reflector off because the reflector's in the way. There we go. Oh, okay. Did you see that? Did you get that? <laughs> I got it. All right, he's big here. So I got the wheel off. I'm just gonna kind of walk you how I took it off because I, I, the manual doesn't tell you how to do it. <laughs> so, so this is how I did it. All right. Um, the first thing I did was well, we took the axle out, right, and then everything comes out. Make sure you don't lose the adjusters on the side here. All right, and then uh, what I did is take the cush drive hub out. All right. That's this guy. You just pull it straight out, all right? Make sure you don't lose the rubbers, all right? Um, and then that gives you enough clearance to, to scooch it out from the fender. I, I wish this long-ass fender wasn't here. It would be a lot easier to take it out just by pulling it straight back, but freaking Honda. <laughs> okay, that's just, that's just how they designed this thing, okay? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe you could take the shock out that might make it a little easier but then yeah you would have to make sure the other side doesn't fall down and the other side has the muffler on it all right so yeah um yeah so i took the cush drive hub out and then we i pushed the wheel forward and then i angled it this way all right and i pulled it out this way all right um, the the reflector gets in the way one thing you could probably do is uh let the air out of the tire and squeeze the tire. I, I was gonna do it and then I managed to get it out, right? I managed to squeeze it out from like over here. Like that, okay? Um, yeah, how are you supposed to do this while you're on the road? I don't know, I guess you don't, you guess, I guess you don't do it. <laughs> I don't know, man. But yeah, um, you could take this reflector out. Yeah, that's what I would do. You could just un unscrew the reflector and then just take it out and then it'll make it easier to get it out that. Or you can take all the, take the valve core out of the tire squeeze the tire and then that might you be able to get you enough clearance where you can just get it out of that little pocket right there okay um yeah tahana has had to make this really difficult another thing you could do is if you had a lift or something you could lift the bike up and then take it out underneath but you'd have to lift the bike up like quite a bit all right so so i think the way i did it is how you're supposed to do it i guess um, i don't think it would have come out the right side because because the muffler is there right so you gotta you gotta take it out the left side. All right, what a pain in the ass, man. <laughs> that's a hard, that's one of the hardest tire removals ever I've ever done on a motorcycle, guys. Ridiculous. Okay, so in the next, uh, yeah, let, let's, I'll show you all the parts that are left over, and then uh, in the next part we will install it. Okay, after I got the new tire installed. Okay, so you got your wheel out. All right, this is what you're gonna have left over. Um, you're gonna have the brake adjustment hardware here, all right, the nut, 
the pin and this also there is a washer there's a washer here all right on the brake lever the brake thingy the brake rod don't lose that oh i guess it doesn't come out just make sure you make sure that that little washer stays there all right um and then uh you've got all the the rest of the brake stop uh the brake assembly hardware all right it consists of the cotter pin the uh the rubber washer a regular washer a nut and a bolt okay and that's going to come out from the back that's the part that connects to this all right and then you've got your brake assembly all right so i i took this out all right as you see it looks freaking brand new i really i don't use the rear brake a lot on my bike <laughs> um yeah this came up this comes out of the right side all right I don't know. Ooh. I think this washers. I think this is supposed to be like this. Yeah, this is like this. There's nothing on the other side. Is there? Uh oh. Huh. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so I looked at the diagram. This goes outside, alright? This doesn't go on the inside. So this goes on the outside of this. So it would be like that, okay? Or it would be like this okay that washer is supposed to be like that all right and then that goes inside here okay drum assembly i wish you could just convert this to a disc brake man um all right and then you're gonna take i took the cush drive hub out also okay so you just pull that straight out and you should have these four rubber kind of things dampeners in here all right make sure you inspect them make sure they're not you know messed up or anything if these when these wear out you you'll know it wears out the chain will move uh the the sprocket the sprocket will move back and forth it won't okay, be on there solid drive hub. kush drive hub has a spacer inside it all right so don't lose that make sure that stays in there i don't think you could install it wrong because it doesn't go in the other way all right this is supposed to go inside the bearing okay and then you got another spacer right here don't lose that leave that there that should stay in there because it's got a seal so put this back don't lose it and then you should have your axle okay so the axle consists of the axle okay the adjuster plate just leave i would just leave this one on here and a washer all right all right and then the other side the other side has another plate there should be another washer okay yeah and then the other side has a washer and a nut, all right? So this goes like that, and this goes like that, all right? And then, oh boy, I hope I remember what side was what. <laughs> okay, so the adjuster plate, um, I, I marked it so it has the up arrow and the L, all right? I don't know if you could, if, I don't know if you could flip it around, all right? But this is the opposite of the other side, all right? So, so I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't flip it around, I'm not sure. But, but I just, I marked it how, how I took it out, all right? So, so there it is. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that on there. Put it together with all these goodies here. All right, and that's all the stuff I have left over. And then all the stuff on the ground here. And then just, yeah, I would definitely make sure you got a jack stand there. So, um, this, uh, this doesn't fall down. Because <laughs> it'll easily fall down, guys. Uh, even though there's more weight in the front, you know, it'll still rock forward, rock back, okay? And then what I did is I left the adjuster, adjuster bolts, all right? The, um, I guess the bottom has this little cutout there, so, so you know that's the bottom, all right? And then you'll have a stopper nut. I left it all on there, okay? So, it's that way I don't lose it. Okay, and there it is. I've got the rear wheel removed. All right, if so, in the next clip, I will show you how to put it all back together. Uh, it's pretty much the reverse, but we've got to start torquing stuff. All right, let's make out.